Welcome back. So in the last video, we introduced the idea of constrained optimization. And we introduced this specific problem of, called the student's dilemma, where we're trying to pass our French and Calc exams subject uh, to constraints in terms of the minimum hours we need to pass each classes, the maximum hours we can spend before we lose interest, the return on investment we get on studying, and a total budget constraint in terms of dollars and hours. So how do we actually solve this problem? So let's go through things that you might try that don't work first. So first you might say, let's approach this algebraically. Well, the problem is that there's two unknowns, X and Y, and we wrote down a total of, of seven equations, or actually a number of them were inequalities, but we wrote down you know, seven algebraic expressions. Uh, how do we solve this type of problem? That's not obvious. Uh, it's, it's not two equations, two unknowns, plug and chug sort of algebra. What about calculus? Uh, we wanted to maximize our total grade. So maybe we took some derivatives, d grade dx, d grade dy, and ask, you know, how do I maximize my grade? Well, that, you know, just doing calculus says you should spend an infinite amount of time studying both subjects and you will maximize your grade. Great, but how do we account for the constraints? There actually is a mathematically way, way to take into account these constraints. Uh, it's, it's known as the method of Lagrange multipliers, and it's not what I'm gonna focus on here. It's something that you'll actually cover uh, in, in later classes if you keep on with the EAP major, the new course number that used to be uh, 420, I think it's 545 or something like that now, uh, you know, covers in, in, in quite a bit of detail, uh, this method of Lagrange multipliers. Here, I tend to focus more on numerical solutions. So let's think about some numerical options. Uh, one numerical option would be brute force. So option three, test all possibilities. So here, imagine a spreadsheet where I plugged in, uh, starting with the minimum you need to spend three hours in the language lab, two hours of tutoring, total time, total cost, total grade, passes. Uh, but can we do better? So we can try different permutations of increasing different hours. Here we've X'd out the ones that fail to meet a constraint. Um, and so this would work. It would work by essentially by brute force. You're doing all these things manually. So not particularly efficient if the problem gets larger and, and this is definitely going to suffer from the constraint of the curse of dimensionality. So as, as the problem gets bigger, checking everything by brute force gets very daunting. And it also uh, in, has this assumption that I'm only working in terms of whole hours. So, um, you know, I can't spend half an hour on something. I can't spend 15 minutes. If, if I do that, I increase my number of things I have to test and it becomes much more challenging. Uh, but you could also think of this as somewhat analogous to when we were trying to maximize likelihoods. Like if we only had one parameter, we could plug in a whole bunch of values and see what they did. Uh, and you could do that manually to a de reasonable degree of accuracy. But if we wanted to optimize something uh, more generally with a you know, larger set of options, we would do that numerically. <clears throat> so I want to talk now about how we do this sort of numerical optimization. So that's kind of our fourth option. Uh, so we have what well, we learned when we learned about maximum likelihood. We learned that there are a bunch of different computational algorithms that exist to minimize functions. For example, the one we've been using in maximum likelihood, uh, such as Optum, and we can employ these sorts of uh, optimization functions in order to optimize things that aren't likelihood. So optimize any sort of uh, optimization problem, as long as we can code it up as a function. Uh, so my next video, what we're going to do is dive into some simple examples of how we write down functions that aren't likelihoods that we want to minimize or maximize and build up our intuition for how we would do this with something like the student's dilemma. Thanks.